Hello, Oscillator Sync here. For the last few weeks, I've been working hard, mostly on my Digitone patch pack, so I thought for a change of pace today, I might feature something on the channel that I have featured before, but kind of a long time ago. Uh, and I thought it's worth talking about because I think it's a really, really interesting piece of equipment, which is the Soulsby at Megatron. So the Soulsby at Megatron is an 8-bit synthesizer and in its default form it is really cool like chip tuny type stuff. I've featured it, as I say, a long time ago on the channel where I made some like uh, sort of JRPG style uh, songs. I'll put a link to them in the description. Maybe a card will appear up here somewhere. Um, but one of the really neat things about it is that it has uh, a firmware which is reprogrammable and it can be programmed to do a couple of other things. There's a drum machine, there's uh, a, a synth with delay, but the firmware which I've loaded onto it recently, which I'd like to explore today, let me put this overlay on so we can get a better idea of what's actually represented here, is the Auditron firmware. And what's really cool about the Auditron firmware is that this is an 8-bit emulation of the ARP Odyssey. Cool. So what I thought I'd do today, just for a bit of fun, is explore the Auditron, uh, make some patches, listen to some sounds. Uh, to help us along, we have the DC Electronic Flashback 2 for delay and the Digitech Polara Reverb, which I'll probably turn on at some point and never turn off again because I love delay and reverb so much. And just controlling it with the Arturia Keystep Pro. So let's have a listen, shall we? So the interface is okay on this thing. It's it's a little bit fiddly in places, so you'll have to bear with me as I move around. Uh, so you have these controls up at the top, which always do the same thing. And then for everything else, you have this select here, which will select the parameter. Sometimes you'll be able to press the button to change what the parameter is doing. And then you have the value control here. So try and keep up with what I'm doing here. Uh, so let's start with the basic sound. So um, it follows the same architecture as the uh, Odyssey, more or less. So up at the top here, we have the audio mixer, which allow us to um, mix together the two different oscillators. So here's the first oscillator. In sawtooth mode. When you're in the middle of the range, you can hear a little bit of digital aliasing. As you go further up, things get really gritty. And you're either going to love the fact that things get gritty or you're going to hate it. Personally, I've got synths which are analog and don't go gritty like this, so down at the bottom, get that sort of aliasing ring to it. Cool. Uh, so let's um, have a listen to the square wave. Cool 8-bit square wave sound at the top. Down at the bottom. Quite weighty. Cool, um, and you can adjust uh, the level of how much you've got that in the mix. So it can only be one or the other per um, oscillator though. Uh, let's um, go up to the filter for a second. So digital filter, everything is uh, digital pretty much. Uh, you've got two different filter modes, or three actually. So you've got that button when it's off, there's no filter, there's nothing you can do to filter anything. Uh, green is kind of a smoother sound. Let's turn the resonance down, just have a... The um, filter circuit on the, on the filter algorithm on the normal app Megatron is really gritty. This is a lot smoother, it still has that cool ringing there. Bit of resonance. So that's the resonance dimed in this mode. So not very high resonance really, uh, quite brassy in red mode. Immediately, there's built-in resonance there. I love that sound. 
It's kind of digital brass. So you turn up the resonance a bit. That's what you're doing, wah mouth. Nice bit of ringing. Uh, just coming down to here, you can turn on. Um, Uh, keyboard tracking. So even with the filter, turn low down. You'll still get stuff across the whole of the keyboard, which is cool. Let's go back to the green mode for the moment. And let's bring in the other oscillator. Apparently have sync turned on there. Let's turn that off. So there you have the two oscillators and you can tune them individually on these two knobs here and indeed we do have um, a duophonic behavior. So we could set one of them to square and the other one to... Should we put a little bit of delay on? Stereo delay, so we've got a bit of widening there. Sawtooth there, both on square wave. So, uh, the next thing in the mixer, the only other thing in the mixer, allows you to choose between mixing in noise or ring mod. So we can bring in... some noise into the sound. So things weren't gritty enough for you already. We can make it grittier by adding in some noise, or we can bring in ring mod. So it's going to ring mod. I don't know which way around it is. I think it's ring modding one with two. Two with one.
And of course, you could dial out the, the two oscillators and just have the ring mod in there. Or just bring one of the oscillators in. So loads of really lovely dirty sounds to be had there. Uh, okay, where to go next? Should we go to the envelope and add something in there? So we can choose whether or not the envelope for the um, uh, the amp is going to be sort of an AD, ASD rather, or a, no, an AD, or uh, adhere to the actual ADSR. So at the moment it's just set to be uh, an AD. So we can... ADSR as well. Oh, which we can also apply to other things. So maybe let's apply that ADSR to some other things. Let's set ourselves back to to that. And let's um, let's go to our filter section, the DCF here, and let's apply some um, envelope to it, shall we? So we can turn up the envelope amount, we can choose whether it's being affected by the simple envelope or the ADSR, let's do the ADSR. And let's um, set the ADSR amount, or rather give it some shape, so we'll give it some attack. say this interface is maybe occasionally a bit suboptimal but we'll make do. Should we add some reverb as well? Let's go over to DCO2 and let's do some sync. So let's uh, and let's put our attack back. Uh, so uh, DCO2, we can go to that one there. We can set 
that to so this is the fm or uh, of dci2 and we can have it going between a couple of different things so um if this is orange it's going to do sample and hold random which is going to be linked to the the LFO speed. Actually, let's leave it there for a second. And if we go here, uh, we can turn on sync. Cool. Or we can have that affected by the envelope. So yeah, we can also just have normal vibrato on the FM there. So if we, uh, on this one here, if it's on uh, orange, it's going to be our uh, sign LFO. So we can have one oscillator for, uh, doing vibrato and not the other one. can also turn on here as well or we can have it affected by a square wave instead which this has been tuned so it's really easy to get um, decent intervals Okay, so um, that's most of the stuff on it. Oh, we haven't done pulse width modulation. Nick Pat will be very cross with me. Uh, so if we're on um, square wave on DCO2, which we are, we can also turn on pulse width modulation here. Okay, let's try and make a let's try and make a bass sound, shall we? So um, let's go with uh, square wave and square wave. filter mode we'll turn on the filter uh, tracking and then we want to put some envelope 
Uh, we want our DCO. Our oh, VCO, rather. To just act like a gate. Something like that. And we're going to want to smash our ADSR into our filter. So we can come here, uh, turn up. Oh, that's the something hold, wrong one. Uh, there, rather. And we're going to want to set our ADSR up to be fast attack, quick. some ring mod in to get some bit more grit. Ring mod. Let's try making a, a lead sound, perhaps. So, if we just go back around to like an initialized patch as far as it goes. So, just a square wave at the moment, bit of delay. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned is that we do have a uh, portamento here if we want it. Vibrato. Make a bit darker. I've also got a high pass filter here, which I haven't mentioned really. So that's really kind of basic stuff going on there. So maybe we can bring in the other DCO. Oh, I think I've got sync turned on at the moment, which... Might be fun, mind it, if we have that of an envelope doing that for us. So we can go to uh, here. Switch that over to pitch mod. Uh, no, it's not pitch mod, sorry, I need to be uh, here rather. Uh, switch that over to envelope four. Uh, that, and then we'll go here to our ADSR.
slow attack. second half a little bit more. Yeah, instant sync sound, quick attack. Pivering mod. Dirty up. Perhaps we should have the um, filter following that as well. Uh, so we want that in ADSR mode. for the filter. Some of the sample and I can't do that, and the can't have sample hot and hold and envelope. Let's try that now. We've got now we've got the filter moving. Let's try without the sync. Uh, sorry, the envelope pitch for the sync. Let's try sample and hold for that instead. <laughs> Because um, the duophonic behavior doesn't go away just because we have sync on, when I play a higher note, it's always oscillator two that's going to take that higher note, so we can get different sync tones by playing other intervals. So they're at unison now, although the pitch of, if we turn off sync, you can hear that that oscillator's been pushed and pulled all over the place pitch wise. Sync turned on. When I play a high note, it's not changing the pitch. It's changing the overtones that we get from the sync. Um, 
Nice. Okay. Let's um, go back to initialize patch and just do one more little exploration, shall we? Okay, let's do, just do one more weird thing, shall we? Uh, let's lean into the geophonic behavior. So I need both uh, oscillators on. Let's slow down the uh, delay a little bit. Bring in some ring mod. Maybe we'll give us some uh, envelope. So we'll have our VCA set to uh, the simple envelope, I think. Um, give that some release as well. this time by the LFO. DCO1, which will be our root note. The uh, square wave is unipolar, so you're only getting a pitch up, which is Chef's kiss. Bit of portmanteau. Sets on every key press. Yeah. So have to play in time. Try 
square way for that bottom one. Oh, that's big. quite differently when they're both square waves, which is cool. I guess now that they're both square waves, we can put some false width modulation in. It was fun for you as well. I uh, really enjoy getting reacquainted with this since. Um, yeah, I haven't really featured it a lot on the channel. I haven't used it a lot recently, but I just felt like sticking this uh, firmware on it and having a noodle. And I'm glad I did because it's. I don't have a, an R Odyssey, and this is not an R Odyssey. But in an eight bit mold you've got a lot of the character there it's doing that screaming aggressive weird and quirky vibe i think that the mind that it takes to decide that you're going to take an 8-bit platform and build an up odyssey on it is a, is the mind of a mad genius so um thank you uh uh Salisbury for uh, for doing that i really enjoyed that anyway um thanks for uh sitting through and uh coming with me on this journey exploring the Salisbury Auditron. If you enjoyed the video, then please do give it a thumbs up and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on any upcoming synth fun. Um, I hope that you uh, enjoyed the Digitone patch pack that I just put out. Remember that the sample's in there as well. If you don't have a Digitone, then you can still enjoy the sounds and they're free, so go and grab them. Uh, otherwise, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.